I want to go stupid fast with flash or wait, Optane. I don't know. <laughs> flash. Ah! You know, like the flash as in uh, Barry Howard, you know, because it's a thing. Barry Howard would be needed to keep up with that Raid Array. My goodness. Yeah. So two terabytes of uh, <laughs> not screwed down. Some people are triggered right now. Uh, NVMe storage on this card. There's, it should be screwed down, but we're gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you some stuff in a minute. So yeah, this is the ASRock Ultra Quad M.2 card. Four M.2s on a single PCI Express by 16 card. Only applicable for Threadripper. Sorry, Intel, you need not apply. You don't have enough PCI Express lanes to be able to do this kind of magic, this sort of craziness. Oh, there comes the downvotes, but more in a minute. Four M.2s on a single card. It's obviously a very niche product because it is gonna be very expensive to populate this device with a bunch of PCI Express NVMe. So I figured that we could take a little detour and talk about why this kind of thing is not really possible on i9, but even more importantly, Intel's competing NVMe RAID technology is actually kind of dumb, like actually very dumb. I, I would say borderline FTC should get involved and do an investigation because there's no possible way that it can work. With Intel, on the Intel platform, they have NVMe RAID. Of course, Threadripper on AMD has NVMe RAID as well. Threadripper has a ton of PCI Express lanes, 60 lanes on the desktop. You're only gonna get 44 lanes on the i9. But most i9 motherboards and most Threadripper motherboards have two, at least, usually three M.2 slots right on board. The difference is that on Threadripper motherboards, those M.2 slots are connected directly to the CPU. They each have their own dedicated PCI Express by four lane right to the CPU. With the Intel, even with VROC, the M.2 lanes, at least on every block diagram of every X299 motherboard that I've taken a look at, including the ones that I've personally reviewed, go through the chipset and then from the chipset to the CPU. So all those three M.2 slots go to the DMI. They each have their own independent PCI Express by four connection to the chipset but the chipset is only connected to the CPU with a single PCI Express by four. So Intel talks about having hardware on the CPU to assist with RAID. Threadripper doesn't really have that. It just has the PCI Express lanes. Everything is done in software. And it might be true. It might be true that there is some hardware on the i9 CPU that's a holdover from something Intel's doing on Xeon to let you run NVMe RAID, uh, you know, through M.2 or U.2. Uh, directly on the CPU, and the CPU is doing some of the processing for you. But why would that matter if all of the data is squeezed through the tiny straw that is PCI Express by four? Think about that for a second. Think about how underreported that's been. It's not like you can buy VROC keys anyway. Intel's playing games with that, uh, not to mention the, the whole branding thing, because you don't need a VROC key if you're going to use Intel branded SSDs, but if you use somebody else's branded keys uh, or somebody else's branded NVMe, you will need a VROC key. And the VROC keys have different licensing levels. I just, it just reeks of antitrust shenanigans. Not gonna trust, touch that with a 10 foot pole. It's too bad too, because the Optane 800P in RAID would not be an incredibly unusable device. It is too expensive in my opinion, but uh, if you're gonna go with Optane because you have to have something as fast as Optane in terms of latency, because it's not actually faster in terms of throughput, but it is actually faster in terms of uh, latency and Q depth one type operations, then your your only option really is a 900p. Uh, and it's not even that the capacity is a problem with the 800ps because the you know the Optane 800ps they're lower capacity. They're meant to be your OS drive or your boot drive. Can't even use them in a caching configuration officially. Uh, but yeah, they're just they're too small, too expensive. 200 bucks for 112 gig. What you know clearly. <laughs> Clearly Intel and their ivory tower set that price. It's, you know, down here with the rest of us. I don't think so. So coming back to this thing, yes, Threadripper can do this, but this is still a really super niche product. So I've got a couple of Samsung 960 Pros in here, as well as a, uh, some OCZ, some Toshiba drives. One's, a, one's OCZ brand and the other one is not OCZ branded, but they're very similar. And with these drives in a RAID Zero, theoretically they're approaching 15, 16 gigabytes per second. Yes, gigabytes per second. That is crazy. But in practice, putting this much throughput through a single PCI Express by 16 slot, Threadripper has trouble keeping up. 
If you want it to run at maximum speed, you're actually better off using two of your M.2s on this expansion card and two M.2s through two the M.2s on the motherboard. And the reason for that is because it splits the array between the two dies, the two dies inside of Threadripper. And that actually is more efficient when we're talking about software RAID because a, you know, 16 gigabytes per second on the PCI Express by 16 interface is just a little bit more than Threadripper can handle, at least that it seems like it can handle in my testing. Now who on earth is actually gonna run NVMe RAID? That just seems crazy. Well, I think most people that would be interested in that would be fine with a RAID 0, possibly a RAID 1, of M.2, in which case your motherboard is gonna take care of you. It's gonna be no problem. That's even in the new iMac Pro, like the new iMac Pro, you know, bitching fast, whatever, cause Apple. Uh, yeah, it's it's a RAID 0 of two M.2s and that's how they offer, you know, like the two and four terabyte capacities is that they have those, you know, they've doubled up on the number of devices. So I think if you were gonna build a workstation, I think my best recommendation would be a RAID 10 so that you've got uh, a RAID 0 in a mirrored configuration. So you've got two NVMe strapped together, you get the same speed as the iMac Pro, but then you've also got a mirror in case one of these craps out. Um, you, you have not lost all of your data. Of course, if you are a crazy person and you want it to run really insanely fast, you could totally do a four drive RAID, uh, RAID 0, just make sure all your stuff is backed up. This card physically has PCI Express uh, six pin power and an active fan, as well as thermal compound on the inside of the lid so that you can pull the stickers off and stick it to your M.2s, which hopefully will be screwed down correctly. They've also taken care to make sure that the length of the wires is the same for all of the M.2, because when we're talking about PCI Express speed, the, the speed of electricity through copper versus the transfer speed of PCI Express 3.0, the amount of time it would take electrons to go from the top of the motherboard to the bottom of the motherboard, you can fit at least a byte's worth in the height of the motherboard, which is kind of mind blowing. So it's like, okay, I've transferred eight bits, which is enough for a byte. Uh, and you mean to tell me that it's basically just buffered on the copper traces on the motherboard? And it's like, yeah, it's basically that fast. A real world though, I don't know if that would actually make much of a difference, but certainly ASRock is touting that. I think that there are some other a latency and other bottlenecks there in terms of like using this kind of a device. Now, if you were gonna try to use this on an Intel platform, even one, you, you're gonna give up your by 16 slot and run your graphics in by eight, still not gonna work because each PCI Express device needs a clock to synchronize to. Threadripper has that. Threadripper can, can split a, a by 16 lane into four by four lanes. There's an option in the UEFI that you have to set on your motherboards in order to do that. On the Intel platform, there's no clock generator on the CPU to do that. You'll need some kind of a bridge chip to bridge these lanes into the, the PCI Express by 16 lanes. So again, not gonna work on the Intel platform as far as I'm aware. If I'm wrong, I would love to be wrong about that because you know maybe there's something special Intel is doing, maybe they're doing something special with the hardware, but honestly, I haven't even been able to get my hands on a VROC key. So yeah, wouldn't even bother. If you wanna build the craziest fast workstation with NVMe RAID. I mean, obviously you're gonna be shelling out a bunch for NVMe drives, as I said before, but it will be crazy fast. Crazy, insanely fast. So, good luck to you. So I did think of one use where this could work really well, and that is ZFS storage servers. I don't know if Threadripper is teethed enough that people that are building large capacity, you know, high reliability storage arrays We'll trust the new platform that is Threadripper, plus some off-label uses of these kinds of components, maybe. With this on Threadripper, you could put a bunch of Optane drives on this and use that for your, your ZFS pool. I mean, hell, you could use the, the, the M.2 on the motherboard plus this and have a crazy, crazy fast uh, virtual machine storage system. I looked at a couple other things on Linux, like using maybe Optane as a file system cache, you know, as part of LVM, some of the experimental devices where it's like you can have a storage pool on LVM and then specify an NVMe device or specify any other device to use as a cache device. Something like that could also work as well. The thing to remember with Optane is that the 800p and the older 16 and 32 gig uh, M.2, it's only PCI Express by two. So we're not really even using all the PCI Express connectivity here. You, you end up wasting half your lanes, but such is the nature of Optane. Now you could get a bunch of these 280 gig uh, U.2 Optanes and have the adapters go out from this. You wouldn't be able to use the cover on the card, but because these come with low profile U.2, M.2 to U.2 adapters, uh, it'll fit in a single slot 
and be fine. That would be a little bit of an unusual setup. And I don't think anybody really needs, in terms of raw capacity, you know, we're talking about hundreds of gigabytes. Normally your ZIL shouldn't even be that large. Your ZIL should be large enough to hold five to 10 seconds of stuff that you transfer over the network, depending on how fast your network speed is. I mean, if we're talking 40 gig network, you know, maybe, I don't know. Still, think, still seems like it would be a hobby server, test server, dev server. You'd be better off with something like Epic, but then you're gonna get, you know, much better supported U.2, M.2, and paying full retail for, uh, you know, enterprise class, enterprise class. Optane devices is more enterprisey. You know, you don't you don't want your job to be on the line when it's like, look, I built a, a thing from some garbage and Threadripper, and it's amazing, and it might very well be amazing. Certainly, the stuff that I've built is super awesome, amazing. But uh, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to be explaining that to the boss when something goes wrong. So that's that's pretty much it. If you if you can think of a use case that I missed, I mean, the RAID 10 and your super awesome workstation that seems pretty good. And the whole ZFS mirrored Optane devices, that seems like a pretty reasonable use case as well. The 16 to 32 gig Optane devices, even if you got four of them, because they're super cheap right now, still too slow. <laughs> it is terrible, just utterly terrible. This might give you enough M.2 slots that you could use NAND flash for those devices. And then it's like, oh, I, I've managed to cook and destroy a NAND flash device. Eh, you've still got another one, you've got a mirror. It'll be fine, right? So if you think of a use case that I missed, do let me know in the forums at Level 1 Techs. Or if you pick up one of these and you want to show off your build, because your build with one of these is probably really badass, let us know in the forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.